Hello, and this is a breadboard. As you can see here, we have two power rails, red and blue, and these extend for the whole length of the breadboard. In the middle, we have a set of different rows. A, B, C, D, E are the labels for each of the columns. F, G, H, I, J for the other uh, pair of columns. And for each of these five holes on our single row will be a single node that you can connect a component to. If you'd like to connect uh, some components in series, you just connect one node to another and another node to another node and continuing down. A, B, C, D, and E are all connected to the same node for one row. So for row one, all five of these vias are connected. For row two, those are disconnected from row one. So you can route a component, such as a resistor, from one node, say node one, to another node. That's nine. If you have a power supply, and say it's outputting five volts on channel one, we follow some red wires, I have some alligator clips to the banana cables, and I have a uh, power connection right here. I'm going to stick that on the power rail for a plus right there. Then I also have set up a multimeter that's just resting the reference point on the uh, negative lead of the uh, power supply right there. I'm going to connect that to uh, the negative side. So I wanted to make a voltage divider where I have a 5 volt input right here into a resistor R1 and then into a second resistor R2 and then that to ground. How would I do that on a breadboard? So I have two resistors here. Let's just plug them in somewhere. And what I need to do is figure out uh, how to wire these in series. So since these nodes are all, the rows are disconnected from each other, I can route these in series using different wires. Let's say I have this node here for 5 volts. I'm going to plug in a jumper wire, just an extra wire here. Plug it into this R1. Next, I take another wire, plug it in from this node to another node here. Now I have routed power through this wire into R1, through another wire into R2, but we still need ground. So that's what our green wire is going to be, or our blue power rail, as you can see here. I'm using a blue cable to match that as well. I'm going to route this back to our input, right there. Now, all these cables are pretty messy. Um, there's an old adage that uh, short wire is better than long wire, and no wire is better than short wire. So, to clean this up, uh, let's see if we can reduce the amount of wires here. Instead of using this wire to connect the two components, I think I can just comp connect these components directly to each other. That way this R1 goes into the same node, as you can see, all five of the vias on this row are connected, and into R2. Then I can connect this right there. We can make this even simpler actually. Instead of connecting power to this uh, row, I'm going to remove this wire and connect this R to a, its own via here. I'm going to connect this second resistor and then do the same. Move that down there. Now we have less wires. But well, we can do that once more again by taking rid of this ground wire and instead just connecting this directly to ground itself. Now, we only have four wires, or two wires and two components instead of all of those wires that we had in the first place. It's important to color code your wires as well so that if you have red and you have green, uh, for red for power, usually red, uh, yellow, orange, uh, white as well for positive 
function generator input, um, the reference point. If you're using a multimeter, it's the uh, positive input. Um, DC power supplies, it's the positive input as well. This is a tradition um, similar for negative or references or ground. You'll have green, blue on breadboards. You'll have, looks like black on the trainer board here. Um, well, there's no set uh, color code law. It's just tradition that is nice to know. And also it's very nice to like keep everything color coordinated so that when you have multiple components across the breadboard, uh, things get confusing when you have a bunch of different colored wires and you don't know which is which. If you learn that red is power and then you can quickly glance at a uh, circuit and see if the red wire is going to power or not. Similarly, if you uh, need to glance to see if your circuit is grounded, you can look to see if the green or black or brown wires are going to where they need to be. Maybe I wanted to wire these things in parallel as well. So I have two uh, resistors here. As you can follow the electricity, a red comes in through R1 into this uh, row. Each of these nodes are connected in the row and that goes to blue which is ground. I wanted, so this is in a series connection of two resistors. And that's what I did before where I had the resistors going between uh, different vias like this. If I wanted to say wire them in parallel, that means I needed to connect them to the same uh, rows or the same nodes, I should say. If I do this, you can see that these two pins here are connected, and then these two uh, legs here are connected as well. But they are not connected to the red or ground yet. I could take these off and then wire power directly into the input and then ground right here. But then this means that all of these nodes, which are connected, don't have, uh, have power anymore. So if you have other components in your circuit that need that same 5 volt input, then you'll have to route them all to this input, which is uh, not efficient. <laughs> so let's put these back. Another way to route power to here in parallel is instead of using these nodes, I could uh, put these directly on the power bus itself. Something like this, where I would connect. These would be in uh, connected now in parallel. However, this is also a bad configuration because we keep these uh, vias open on the uh, power rail for power connections only, traditionally. There's nothing electrically wrong with this, only uh, not a very good best practice when wiring up circuits. Because if I needed to connect another uh, component to uh, this node or something, or maybe test something else, I'm working directly on the power lines themselves which might have another, a lot of other components connected to it. So this is not a very good idea either. If I needed to do parallel connections, I think the best thing would to do would be something like this. And then using our jumper wires from before. If you have shorter jumper wires, it'd be a lot easier. Then you don't need to have all this flaying cable. And then maybe something from power to the resistor itself. There you go. So, now I have uh, those two resistor legs and the orange wire connected on the same node, and then I have ground connected to the other two uh, resistor legs on the same node as well for a parallel connection.